In this video, I want to talk more about system level planning and strategies. So for most of the time we talk about online instruction and how to make that effective. But um, part of what makes online learning effective is actually our strategic planning around them and how we build out a robust support infrastructure. So I wanted to go into some of those details for you as well in case uh, that turns out to be helpful as part of the planning and development process as well. So this is more of a supplementary video for the content that we're covering, but um, it's still research-based and I thought that it might help you with some of the planning and development process. All right, so let's talk about system level strategies. Uh, part of what we know is that typically online learning is really most effective when you start with essential questions of like, why is online learning or blended instruction desired? And what's your vision for your school or your district for it? If you know, we're starting from a point of uh, we want to do online learning because everybody else says or something like that. That typically doesn't lead to a great implementation of that. And of course, after uh, COVID-19, um, we know why many folks have done at least emergency remote teaching uh, using online learning. But as we look ahead going forward, I think a better question to start asking is, you know, why are we leveraging online? And what really is our vision for it, both in terms of why do we want it, uh, what do we want to get out of that, and how do we want to serve our students? That then helps us inform what variety or varieties will help address the learner and the contextual needs that you've identified. So there are different solutions. There's, a, I think of online learning as like a, a universe of different possibilities. And then there's different solar systems <laughs> of different approaches to online learning within that. Um, so there's no one single approach and you really, really need to think carefully about what it is that you wanna do and how that helps meet your learner's needs. And then from there, we can get down into the how of how will you develop and implement quality online and blended and or blended instruction. So let's take those apart a little bit. Um, in terms of uh, actively strategically planning this, um, why is online learning or blended desired? And what is your vision for your school or district? If you haven't gone through process yet, you could use um, this video and these slides to start to work through a process for that. And then from there, answer the question of what variety will help you and how. Some of the components to focusing on the why question is what gap or need are you trying to address? So really identifying and defining the problem really well. Um, you know, is it just in response to the pandemic or are there other learner needs or gaps that you want to address where online learning is actually a great solution for that? What are your learner characteristics and needs? Um, not all learners are really well suited to online learning. Um, we know, for example, that the ability to self-regulate is, is important to being successful in an online learning environment. Um, and not all learners are going to be up to that task. Some of them just because developmentally they're not ready yet. Um, so what might be remote learning or online learning, for example, for young learners, is really more like digital content and sessions where that's supported at home, perhaps by a caretaker. And then contextual analysis as well, like really looking at what are the context specifics um, that are important to the design and decision making process. So this could be anywhere from, you know, what is the actual infrastructure for online and internet access for the learners you're uh, aiming to serve? Would mobile learning solutions make more sense or would some other sort of technologies make sense or um, does this mean you need to advocate for expanded infrastructure or network somewhere? And so the contextual analysis is really important to figuring out 
what's going to be most effective and will you really reach and support the learners that you want to reach and support. In terms of what, I'm going to go into some more detail on this, but uh, just I'll break it down here very quickly. Um, online learning uh, falls into several different categories. You may be focused more on social online learning that is class-based and class-paced. Then there's individualized learning or personalized learning, and we'll talk about these terms and how to distinguish them. Or does blended make more sense? And then in terms of how you will develop and implement quality online instruction, um, there are instructional decisions and needs, and there are planning and coordination needs as well. These would be more like system supports, resources, etc. So I'm going to go into each of these components in detail. Uh, you may have some instructional needs or identifying some of the instructional gaps as to why you want to do online or blended. Um, in terms of uh, working with SAD at the instructional level, first you want to define the gap, map out you know, the learner needs and context and any important details. And then we get into setting instructional objectives that address the gaps and select appropriate methods. and. Um, selecting the right technologies based on that. And you'll see that as we go through this workshop and the job aid I've created for you, that we follow um, this sort of process very closely. Now, in terms of instructional systems, um, you know, we start again by defining um, the gaps first and um, still mapping out well, what are the learner characteristics and needs and important contextual um, considerations, but then we get into setting strategic objectives that help address those gaps and needs and selecting appropriate interventions or solutions and then select the right technology. So it's pretty much the same process. It's just this is at a more micro level and this is at a more macro level. And some of the interventions and solutions we might use here are non-instructional uh, interventions um, that support our ability to provide quality instruction. So we'll get into that separately. All right, let's talk about the what. Um, I mentioned that we can break this down into four different categories, social, individualized, personalized, or blended. So I wanna give you a vocabulary to work with around this. I think the vocabulary is very helpful. In fact, if anything, this slide is probably why I decided to record this particular talk for you as well. Social online learning is actually the most common type of online learning that is designed and delivered, even though you may hear these other terms used. Under social online learning, students are in a class with other learners and they are working at the same pace and often working together in some manner. There's a high degree of interaction with the content, the students, and the instructor and between all of these elements. And then um, this can be asynchronous, synchronous, or some mix of both of those. So social online learning and interaction and working together and things like that, that, that does not mean that this is all happening synchronously as in Zoom. And synchronous means at the same time um, doesn't necessarily have to be in the same place, just at the same time. Asynchronous means uh, they're participating on their own time. But what makes this different is that everybody's, you may be doing that, uh, the learners may be participating at their own time within the week, but they're interacting with each other across that week, for example, or within a given day. Um, uh, they're just not doing it through Zoom or video. They might be doing it on like a discussion board or something like that. Um, and really, when we'll get into the research on this uh, in a little bit or in a later video, but what we found is that there's no real learning difference between using asynchronous or synchronous. These are just each better suited to different types of activities and different types of learning objectives. 
Um, and of course, asynchronous affords more flexibility, whereas synchronous provides more structure. So depending on your learners, if you feel like you need more structure, especially like with younger learners, then you'll want to make more use of synchronous technologies and time. Um, whereas if you've got older learners uh, who you're working with, then um, asynchronous may be essential uh, for providing them flexibility, time to digest complex content, things like that. I'm going to pop over here to blended um, because I think we can sort we can differentiate between these two easier. So blended uh, doesn't mean that you're teaching in a classroom and oh by the way you use technology and students have to do homework at home. Um, that's really what we just call a technology enabled classroom. Um, blended learning means that some interactions between the learners and with the instructor occur online or at a distance and some interactions occur in a face-to-face -face setting. So a really easy way to distinguish this is to say, um, if are my learners interacting with me or with each other or both at a distance or in an online format? If so, then that's a blended learning design. Um, if not, if they're just doing like digital homework or something like that or watching a video at home, that's, um, that's just technology enabled classroom learning. Um, there's no qualitative difference, like that's not to suggest that one's better or the other. This is just helping us get our vocabulary straightened away. Blended, designing blended learning requires consideration of geographic context because in, obviously in order for students to get together and learn together physically as the in-person uh, component of blended, they've got to be geographically near each other. If you have students who are geographically dispersed for some reason, um, then blended learning is just not gonna be a great option for them. Now, individualized learning uh, means the instructor or some expert establishes the objectives and the content, but the learner is the one who determines the pacing um, and that, uh, you know, they work through at their own pace um, and that may even impact the sequencing sometimes. So, you know, if you've got a, sometimes a system is designed so a learner can skip over something that they test out of or something like that. Um, but they move through their pace is based on them individually. They're not waiting with others and they're not interacting with other students or collaborating. So learners take an individual path through the content and usually the focus of this is to demonstrate mastery, to demonstrate that they understand something, that they can explain it. Um, and that's kind of lower order Bloom's taxonomy. So usually the learning objectives that we're focused on around individualized instruction usually tend to be around more like retention and comprehension or lower order Bloom's taxonomy. Um, and in our uh, videos and, and lessons on assessment, we'll, we'll get more into Bloom's taxonomy and retention and comprehension, all that, if you're not already familiar with that. For personalized instruction, now the learner is also determining the objectives and the content. So it's not an instructor or an expert, but the learner themselves uh, are determining um, the objectives in the content. Um, this kind of takes a form of, for example, I want to learn about uh, Moroccan cooking. <laughs> and so I'm gonna go watch some videos about that. And I'm the one that decides what I wanna learn, when I wanna learn it, how I'm gonna go, do I finish it, all of that good stuff. Um, so this varies in focus and content and sequencing and pacing and all of that good instructional stuff because it's all up to the learner. Some other terms that you may hear uh, used are um, self-paced and self-directed. Um, so individualized learning is self-paced instruction, um, but the learner is not directing it or setting the objectives. Um, personalized learning, however, is very self-directed. It's the learner who is deciding everything. 
So clearly choosing which type or variety of online learning you're going to uh, implement is really important. Now it's also important to know you could use some mix of these. Um, sometimes we give students opportunities to do um, independent studies, for example. So, you know, you may be largely implementing something that's very class-based, class-paced, um, but then you may have other instances where you say, you know what, let's provide them something individualized where, for example, we're going to have them go through and learn about some, you know, good writing and formatting or something like that. And that's something where we can um, make it available to them for them to go through on their own time as long as they complete it by X date. And that can be very self-paced. And maybe we want to provide some opportunities that are very personalized where the student is the one who sets the objectives and engages in some independent self-directed study. Um, so uh, while the categories are distinct from each other, that isn't meant to suggest that you can't use them in combination. This is just helping us getting very clear about what type of online learning we would be implementing and why, under what circumstances. And that also will help you evaluate different tools, say if, you know, if you're sitting in on a sales pitch from a vendor trying to sell you a technology and they say, oh, this is, you know, for individualized learning or personalized or something like that. Well, first of all, vendors don't use these language, this language very clearly. So this will help you start to sort out, okay, what am I really seeing on this technology and what will it really support? Most of our focus when we talk about delivering effective online instruction is maybe a little bit here at the individualized level, but most of it is around social online learning. And you'll find that almost everything that I talk about is really anchored more in this particular space of social and online learning. Okay, so in terms of how, how will you develop and implement quality online and blended instruction? That's what we're gonna get into throughout uh, most of our uh, workshop this, this week and next week. Um, the planning guide that I've created, this is just a screenshot for you is designed to help bring together instructional decisions at the class level or the unit or lesson level with planning and coordination. You know, how can school leadership or district level leadership um, provide supports or things like that that make it um, better or easier for you to deliver effective online instruction? So that planning guide is really kind of two sides and trying to bring that together um, through a handshake of some different considerations that you can map out together. And this planning guide is, it's long. I know when you first look at it, <laughs> you're probably gonna think, oh my goodness, but we'll get there. But it is anchored in research and evidence-based practices um, just to try to help you think through all of the different considerations at the point when we know that those are important to work through.